see today is this information that is happening at a different level, and um, and it's, 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 it gets to people very speedily through social media. So something is said, within minutes, it is often read by thousands of people, it is retweeted on Twitter, and it's on Instagram, and it's on Facebook, and so within minutes, something that is said on the social media gets seen by tens of thousands of people within minutes. The, the distinction between misinformation and disinformation, well, misinformation can be, do you do Twitter on your phone? No, no, no. Anyone here do Twitter? This one. That one. So, so what we see is we, we see somebody uh, you know, sending out a tweet to say, no, that wasn't um, Gavin Watson in the car, it was somebody else. And we retweet it. We say, oh, wow, interesting. You know, um, breaking news. It wasn't Gavin Watson. We retweet it. And it's misinformation being retweeted. Not deliberately. We just get a bit exuberant and we retweet it. But it's inaccurate. And so what you've got out there are thousands of people that see something that is inaccurate. Now, this particular case may not be damaging. But that would be misinformation. Now, disinformation is also misinformation, but very, very carefully calculated misinformation with a purpose. Misinformation to do damage. And I think that's very important. So, as, as I speak, I, I, some of you may know, may not know, but, but many people, individuals, also become the targets of the disinformation. Some of you would probably know that I sued a former president of the country and a former president of the ANC for disinformation, um, for uh, making uh, accusations which he certainly couldn't back up. So we appeared in court last week, and the judgment will come out next week, where uh, Jacob Zuma is being told that you, um, you deliberately sent out disinformation about the person, calling the person an enemy agent. He said, no, 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 I, I, I was only saying, I was only saying he's an enemy agent because he had a discussion with Julius Malema. Now, you know, that's clearly not what he was trying to say. But the problem is, today it's me, it's also General Nyanda, Sipiwa Nyanda, it's also Mwaka Ramakoni, who came out who were accused of being apartheid spies in the Zonga Commission. Tomorrow, my brother, it's you. Or it's you. It depends who poses the threat. And when you have nothing else to lean on, except this kind of, uh, you know, uh, these sorts of tactics that are underhanded, Difficult sometimes, and damage is done instantly, by the way. And that's something we need to understand. So when it comes to disinformation, there is instant damage. Uh, but it's very important that those of us who, who stand for what is right uh, don't get sucked into that. We must uh, obviously try to put out the right information, but not get distracted. Because in this particular case, it's just a diversion. Divert people diverting the public attention from what they are really facing in the public domain and in our courts, in front of our courts. So, so we have to be clear about when we, when we look at information, we need to be much more critical. When we look at information put out. Secondly, we mustn't become the uh, unintended, um, uh, what's the word for it, the collaborators, if you like, in spreading information that we haven't verified, which we can very easily become. And thirdly, we must not get ourselves distracted. We must know what is it that we're trying to achieve. We must be more united and together in trying to achieve the better things for our country. So, so much on, on the misinformation. I've only been given 10 minutes, but these things are quite related to each other. Let me get to migration. Uh, the human species, that's us, you know. We're part of the animal kingdom, and we're called Homo sapiens. That's the species that we are. Our migration started a very long time ago. In fact, you know, as soon as there was something called Homo sapiens, probably somewhere in East Africa, the first human beings that would be regarded as us um, were born there. And they migrated from there. So migrations from earlier species started more than a million years ago, from earlier hominids. But us, people, we started migrating about probably 70,000 to 100,000 years ago out of Africa into Europe, into Asia, into Australia, but humanity started in South Africa, not in South Africa, in Africa. 
and you'll see lots of evidence of it. Uh, when you go to the cradle of humankind in Morapeng, where there's an abundant fossil evidence of you know, our early origins. But we're talking about migration. So humans migrate. They've been migrating ever since they occupied this planet. And now are the only species that occupy all corners of the planet. And the only species that do a number of other things. We talk. Other animals do communicate with each other, but we have sophisticated language. I'll tell you now what, why I'm referring to language. Can any of you think of another animal that wears clothes, that dresses? No, it's only us. No other animal puts on clothing. No other animal has... Uh, uh, birds sing beautifully. But no other animal has musical instruments. And so no other animal has all of the, the forms of culture that we have, beautiful forms of culture that we have. No other animal has that. So we have musical instruments, we have song, we have dance, and we have stories. And we walk around here and we read stories. Stories about who we are, who our ancestors were, what our history is. We have religions. Why am I mentioning all of this? And we, and we move. We migrate. When we deal with xenophobia, we really are dealing with recent, recent immigration or recent migration. But um, the problem with you know, linking these things to each other, um, all of the wonderful things, the, the cultural diversity and the beautiful arts and culture, and creative arts that make up you know, our um, uniqueness as, as the human species, become the instrument of division, become almost the instruments of xenophobia. It's when, you know, so we say we respect everyone's religion. When you're, you believe that your religion is better than other people's religion, when you believe that you not only love your own culture and your own dress, the way you dress, but you believe it's fundamentally better than the way other people dress, and your song and your dance is just so much better than anybody else's, and, and you know, that is your narrow world vision. So xenophobia is really about, uh, if you analyze, you break down the word, you know, the phobia means a fear of something. It's a fear of differentness, of people who are not the, quite the same as me, because I am perfect. If you have some kind of Rasta culture in, as part of your makeup as a human being, as part of your identity, or am I stereotyping you? yourself? No, I might Sorry? There you go. There you go. So it's, it's identity. Um, but, you know, we, we need to respect identity. But we need never to get to the point where we say, because I am this, I am naturally superior to the other. That's what drives genocides. That's what drove the Holocaust in Germany. We are Aryan. We are fundamentally superior to us. Not just Jews. Not just the Holocaust. But people who were different. Gypsies. Roma people in Germany were killed viciously because they weren't, you know, the superior race. So what we have in South Africa is a history of racial separation, of racially based injustice. But it clearly goes deeper than that. Because when we talk xenophobia, we're talking about fundamentally not about a fear, but actually a bit of a hatred of, of people who are different from ourselves. So we're not frightened of the shop owner in, in Soweto from uh, Somalia, but we resent, we resent. And there it becomes quite complex because it's, it's related to economic realities. It's related in South Africa, we have a high level of unemployment, but that is not the way you address this. The way, you know, uh, uh, giving expression to xenophobia a tax on people who are living in South Africa is simply can't be the way you address, we as South Africans address our problems of poverty, unemployment and inequality, can't be. So where, where do we come from? I think you said, you know, Johannesburg has always been a melting pot city. So are we just naturally xenophobic South Africans? Well, maybe people in all countries have this potential to be xenophobic. Um, is, is there under the surface. But we're not naturally xenophobic. So the history that you'll see depicted here 
is a history of people from other countries, other African countries, being in the mining industry, living side by side with South Africans, people from Malawi, Mozambique, Zambia, who are working in the mines as migrants, living in harmony with other South Africans. So there isn't this history of xenophobia in our movement, the ANC, or in our country. Now let's talk about the movement, the ANC. So um, we're talking about migrants, 